Hello everyone, welcome to the video lecture series of Theory of Automata and Formal Languages. We are into unit number 2 where we are learning about regular expression and regular language. So we have com uh, completed uh, successfully with all the topics of our regular expression and uh, we are now indulging into regular language part. Now uh, as we have uh, seen few of the topics regarding regular language, uh, here we will discuss some of the properties that is regular uh, that is related to regular language whether those properties are acceptable for a regular language or not so that properties we will be discussing in this video we will be looking into closure properties and uh, in the upcoming videos as well we will look into some of the properties of closure related to closure and then we will look into decision properties of a regular language okay so if you talk about a closure properties we are having these properties, nine uh, properties. Uh, apart from this, uh, three more properties are also there, but I haven't mentioned over there. So these nine properties are enough uh, to understand how uh, the closure uh, is working with a regular language. Okay. Now, if you talk about a closure uh, term, uh, just uh, we need to think of how this closure is working. Okay. Okay. So if I take uh, set of integers as z which is represented you already know about set of integers being represented by z which uh, comprises of what which comprises of minus infinity to plus infinity correct so this is what you already know the value or the range of uh, set of integers now if i ask you that if i give a negative value suppose minus uh, 15 okay and i'm trying to add i'm trying to use the operator as addition operator and I'm trying to find out minus 15 plus 7. So definitely you will get a value, definitely you will get a value which will be under this one, under a set of integers, correct? So this is how, correct? So if I ask the value will be what? Minus 8, okay? So the value will be minus 8 which is nothing but it falls in this category. So whatever value you take and uh, a negative value or a positive value and a perform an addition operator definitely the result what you'll be getting you'll be getting a integer definitely we can say that this plus operator is closed under set of integers okay or you can vice versa you can say that the set of integers is closed under the addition operator so this is the general definition of a closure so you should be aware of what is the meaning of closure before starting off with this topics okay i think it is clear to everyone now if i ask you that uh, if i if i do the division operator suppose if i do 15 by divided by suppose uh, 7 so definitely if i do this process we will be getting a floating point number which is the which does not belongs to the set of integers then we can say that this set of integers is not closed under the division operator so i think it is clear that what is the use of closed property so we have to find out a area where it is after doing certain operations over that area, you'll get, you'll be getting, you know, you'll be residing into that area only. So that is the meaning of a closure. Okay, let us start off with uh, each and every properties. Okay, and uh, check it out that what is the current scenario. Okay, now we we are having union, intersection, concatenation, closure, complementation, difference, reversal, reversal, homomorphism, and reverse homomorphism. So these are the basic properties which generally satisfies the regular language. We are having one more property which is known as infinite union that is not a closure property okay once you are understood once you have understood these nine properties you will be able to understand what is the meaning of an infinite closure union we will discuss later okay so let us move with the topic wise union so i have already mentioned that the, see the way of proving uh, these properties is a different way okay uh, because we have to prove that whether this particular topic that is union is uh, uh, is closed under uh, is closed for regular language or not that is my uh, criteria correct for proving that uh, you have you can prove by using statement wise by using regular expression by using a finite automata so that that depends on you how you are processing now here i have given a simple definition is that suppose uh, if i talk about uh, area over here and this area comprises of all set of regular language all set of regular language correct Definitely we will be having one L1 suppose over here L2 okay we are having L3 okay and we are having L4 okay, so these are different languages that are already a regular language now can you just identify that if we do or if we add these two languages definitely we will be getting a regular language only so add in terms add is used in terms of uh, regular expression 
but if that ad is nothing but the union so if you union or if you um, uh, do a union operation between any two languages definitely you will get a result as a regular language only that is what mean to say that if l1 and l2 are two regular languages then definitely if we combine both the languages that is l1 and l2 the result will be a regular languages correct so that is l1 union l2 is equals to regular language so therefore we can say that the regular language is closed under union but this is one way you statement wise you are expressing this scenario another way also if you use a regular expression suppose i am having a regular expression as uh, as re1 okay re1 is my first regular expression and another expression i am having as re2 okay re2 is another expression i am having okay now if i do a uh, addition operator with operation between b these two regular expression definitely what you will get you will get a expression in the form of a regular expression only correct definitely you will get a regular expression only so finally after adding these two regular expressions if you are getting a regular expression only which is nothing but a representative of a regular language we can say that for this plus operator you are getting the result in the form of a regular language only so this is also another way of proving union of uh, union closure property i think it is clear so uh, this is how you can prove you can take an example for regular expression and then you can take another expression for uh, a second expression for a regular expression and then if you add these two or if you do the union operator between both these definitely you will get an expression which comprises of regular expression only so that regular expression if it is present then definitely there will be a regular language and finally we can say that that regular language is closed under union okay now if i ask you if i uh, if i if, if you if you doesn't want to prove in this way and you want to prove in another way suppose by using a uh, finite automata okay then how to do that so that also you can do it suppose i am i am i'm taking a state initial state i have taken a initial state and i have taken a final state over here okay i have taken a final state over here okay this is my diagram initial diagram initial state and this is a transition over to this state and this is number 1 automata okay and number 2 automata also i am having of the same structure okay i am having an initial state okay i am having one more state as a final state okay and there is a transition between them okay so this is what you know so this is number 2 finite automata now if you want to add 1 plus 2 that is finite automata 1 and finite automata 2 then how can i merge these two things we can merge these two these two things by writing in this way that uh, i can use a state and i can directly merge this state to this one and to this one okay by using how by using an epsilon transition correct and this particular will act as a final state for finite automata this transition and this will act as a finite automata for this transition that means i have used another initial i, ha I have an, i have converted these initial states into normal states and i have taken one more state and from that i have done a merging for both the states by using epsilon transition in both the direction so here also you can put epsilon transition and here also you can put a epsilon transition okay so i think this is how you can merge two finite automata and therefore the final result that you got is what is a finite automata only so if you are getting a finite automata then definitely there will be what a regular language so if there is a regular language then directly i can say that this regular language is x is closed under union operation so i think it is clear to everyone where we have understood the first property that is union or union property okay so either of the way you can prove it okay now moving to next one is concatenation concatenation also uh, comes across in the same process merging of two different uh, regular languages so that way also you can explain or you can explain with the help of a finite automata as well okay or else a regular expression so if i talk about this example only we are having finite automata 1 and finite automata 2 where a finite automata 1 is having a transition a and transition b for finite automata 2 if we want to merge these two scenarios then what will be the answer the answer will be that uh, i will take a initial state okay and from initial state there will be a transition for where for a and it will go this uh, this in this uh, this one what is this final state will become a normal state now 
and from this normal state i will i will connect to <coughs> one more state okay and that will be your initial state of the second one and from here i will connect this to the final state of the second automata okay or vice versa whatever you want to do okay and this will be your transition b now as we have merged these two definitely this transition will be what epsilon transition I think it is clear to everyone that I have tried to merge automata 2 with automata 1 by an epsilon transition okay and some way the other we got what we got a finite automata only and after a finite automata then definitely there will be a regular language for it okay so if it is if there is a regular language definitely regular language is closed under concatenation I think it is clear to everyone okay uh, if you have remembered in regular expression topic, we have understood a topic known as Thomson's construction, where we have seen if we are having a expression like sorry, if we are having an expression like this, okay, a, b, then how to do that? Definitely, this is nothing but a concatenation a dot b. So if you have to merge these two, definitely a will be in one transition and b will be another transition. And if you have to use epsilon transition in between them, then the same diagram that we have discussed just now. So this is way uh, how you can prove your concatenation uh, property okay so moving to the next one next one is closure uh, okay closure is a very uh, simple one because why if we talk about the automata suppose i am having uh, this is an automata okay and uh, i have an initial state over here and i have a self loop in this automata for a single transition definitely a single transition only a now can, uh, can I say that this is a finite automata yes this is a finite automata we have understood the properties of regular language okay this is a finite automata that means a to the power star a to the power star in terms of regular expression is possible similarly if I talk about uh, if I if I if I remove this particular part okay if I remove this particular part then this is also a possible condition for a finite automata as there is a regular expression and also finite automata definitely we will be having what we will be having a regular language as well so if a regular language is possible then we can say that this regular language is closed under closure property and rest is this is what a uh, uh, you can say a statement wise definition i have i have considered that if l1 consider consists of a language of strings a and b definitely l1 star with what a star b star and this a star and b star is nothing but what it is acceptable by a finite automata and if it is acceptable by finite automata there exists a regular language if it is so then that regular language is closed under closure property okay so moving to the next one uh, complementation okay complementation is a very important topic why uh, for every automata if you're designing any automata you are having a complement of their automata how because uh, this is the scenario that you can have it okay that means if you are having a finite automata then all final states can be converted to non-final states and if we convert all those final states into non-final states and vice versa that means all non-final states into final states then we will get a complement of that dfa so if it is possible if it is possible in this case that for a particular dfa we exist a complement of a dfa definitely for every language there will be a complement of it complement of that language so if it is so then language regular language is always closed under complementation and this is the formula that you can go get it that a complement is nothing but a sigma star minus a that is what i am trying to say that all final states are converted to non final non final is converted to final okay so uh, this is in terms of dfa i have tried to explain you can uh, you can you can draw a diagram and you can show it and then you can also prove it okay okay now moving to the next one i think uh, we are done with few of the things we are done with union we are done with concatenation we are done with closure we are done with complementation now we are left with intersection and difference in this lecture in the next lecture we will look into the topic homomorphism and reverse homomorphism okay so if we talk about the next one that is your intersection see intersection i think if you know about d morgan's law uh, we are having a in a dot a dot b if you want to find out then this is defined as a complement union b complement whole to the power complements huh? so same way we can also find out for two languages intersection the formula is 
लैंग्वेज वन कॉम्प्लीमेंट यूनियन लैंग्वेज टू कॉम्प्लीमेंट होल टू दी पावर कॉम्प्लीमेंट ओके सो ऑलरेडी वी हैव अंडरस्टूड वट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ कॉम्प्लीमेंट राइट फॉर अ लैंग्वेज वी आर हैविंग अ कॉम्प्लीमेंट वी वी हैव ऑलरेडी प्रूफ लैंग्वेज टू ऑल्सो सेम वे यू कैन प्रूव इट then union of that we already know that union uh, that lang regular language is closed under union okay we have already discussed then finally we'll be getting one language which is to the power uh, which which will be having a complement so definitely for that complement we'll also have a uh, regular language and finally we can say that, that is this entire scenario is having a regular language and if it is so then regular language is closed under intersection so i have already initialized or i have already defined these topics individually so you can merge all these topics together into this expression and finally you can uh, say that the resultant is that that the regular language is closed under intersection okay so i think uh, this topic you can write on your own okay you can uh, implement on your own if you have understood the union part if you have understood the complementation part okay so moving to the last one that is your difference okay the difference topic the difference topic is also uh, like is a common one we are all in set theory we have already learned about a minus b a minus b can be represented by a intersection b complement same way if we are uh, subtracting one language from another language we can also write down l1 intersection l2 complement now we already know the proof of l2 uh, uh, l complement okay for this you can write down the complementation and again we know that intersection part as well just now so the same way you can prove it a little bit of blendier one this will be because you have to show this one then again you have to show the entire intersection part okay so it will be a little bit of blendier but you can solve it but maximum time they used to ask that uh, in university or if you are attending any kind of competitive exams they used to ask what are the different types of properties of a closure property but if you look into some competitive exams they generally segregate the language and they ask whether this particular language is satisfying a closure property or not okay for that you have to understand all these nine properties okay i think everyone is clear with the topics so in the next video lecture we will look into yes one more topic is left out reversal i will i will check it out this topic with homomorphism and inverse homomorphism okay so in the next video we will look into these other the left out topics left out properties for uh, closure property thank you for watching the video and do subscribe my channel and keep stay and keep safe okay. thank you